Welcome back to my channel, you guys. I'm Eden Strader, a destination wedding photographer turned business coach, helping hundreds of creatives and photographers like you build the businesses of your dreams so that you can have the lives of your dreams. I'm excited to have you here. Today's topic is gonna to be a little bit different, but one that we definitely need to talk about because it will eventually happen to you and it can be such an isolating feeling when it does. We are going to be talking about clients who are unhappy with their wedding photos. Despite how it feels to you, whether you are prepping for this to happen or it's happening to you right now, I wanna first start by saying that this happens to literally everyone at some point in their career. There are so many factors that go into a wedding day and relationships and photos that there is just going to come a point where people don't like your photos. And there can be different ranges of what this looks like. And so I'm gonna give a couple vulnerable, never talked about experiences and examples that kind of show each of these stages. One, we're gonna have the client that like, maybe you just genuinely messed up. Like you are also a human and maybe you didn't perform your best. Two, we have the person that like, had unrealistic expectations or they didn't communicate something properly and they're just disappointed. And three, we have the person who might just literally be wrong. Maybe you did everything perfectly and there's just something going on with them as a person, their lives, whatever it is, but just like the crazy nightmare client that you're just like, oh my gosh, you were nuts towards everyone and I'm the one that got the shorter end of the stick. These are kind of the three people that you're gonna run into as a wedding photographer and every single situation, one, there's something you should do for it and two, there's something to learn for it. So we're gonna walk through them one by one. So number one, the person where maybe you just straight up didn't do your best. And this one sucks, right? Like, let me be clear. I think this one is the hardest one because not to say you're ever justified in like doing a bad job on someone's wedding. Like I can look back at my career and confidently say that I never did a bad job on someone's wedding, but there are weddings that it's like, wow, yeah, I could have been more prepared for this. And one situation in particular was a couple that I had in the beginning of my career where I just did not do enough front end prep with them. They had like 17 siblings, I had no idea. I had no idea how much they wanted editorial posing instead of just like natural posing. And they were a really sweet, giggly couple, which I didn't usually do a lot of editorial posing with because it, it, it didn't feel like their personalities, but that's what they were expecting. And so they were disappointed. Um, and when they got their wedding photos back, they actually like didn't say anything to me then. But a year later after their wedding, I did this thing where I sent out an anonymous questionnaire to all of my past couples over the last couple years, where I I just asked them to give me honest feedback, um, both on the experience, the photos that they received, like literally everything. And all of them were great. Like all of the feedback I received were great. Like literally the meanest one was just like, oh, I wish we would have gotten a client gift, except for this one. And it was this client that I just did not do enough front end prep on. And they wrote me just like the harshest series of reviews. And I remember getting it back and just feeling one horrible, both as an artist and a human, because like this is someone's wedding day. So for someone to feel disappointed in their photos is just, it's gonna be hard to hear regardless. And it was pretty cutthroat. And so I felt horrible. It was an anonymous form that I had sent out, but I had an idea of who it was based on the things that they said. And so I reached out to her to be like, hey, was this you? I would love to know what I can do to fix this. And that should always be your first approach when receiving any feedback in regards to wedding day images, especially if it's a conversation of like, hey, we're just really disappointed. Like we're sad. Maybe it's not necessarily like, hey, this one shot is missed, but more of a like, hey, we were disappointed in the way that this went. The first question should always be, hey, one, I'm so sorry you feel like this. Two, what can we do? Like, how can we make this better? And so for this client in particular, that looked like redoing a bridal session for them. We had done their bridals and the weather had been absolutely horrific that day as well. Like there were so many factors that went into this just not being ideal. And so one of the things is that she had really put a focus on is like, yeah, I'm just like really disappointed in the posing and the shots that we got during our bridal portraits. And I was like, what if we redid them? Like, I would love to just give you guys a free hour shoot. We can redo them. Like, let's go to your dream location. Because at the end of the day, as a professional who is involved with something as extreme as a wedding day, you need to be willing you need to be willing to make sure that your customer is happy, especially if they're approaching it in a sense of like, hey, 
I'm upset. It could have been better. Fix that. Fix that. Fix that. Fix that. Because I promise you, bad word of mouth is going to end your business sooner than taking a couple hours out of your day to do a redo shoot ever will. And again, just keep this reminder of your in your head of like, these aren't just clients. These are like people getting married like we're not just like delivering groceries for a day or even a family session that can be redone like this is a wedding day so keep that in mind and their emotional attachment to these images in mind when you're approaching these conversations so we ended up redoing her bridal shoot that's how we ended it and even if she didn't leave being obsessed with me i hope that like my hope is to do everything i can to just like Ease one, the pain of disappointment, and two, leave a good taste in their mouth. Now let's talk about number two. Something else has to be going on other than what I have brought to the table. <laughs> and my example for this is I had a client and I'm gonna get try to tell this story with as little detail as, as possible. It was someone that I was friends with, friends through the end industry. And on their wedding day, I took some of my favorite images of my entire career. When I was going to deliver their photos, I was just, I was obsessed. Like I literally remember getting ready to send off their gallery and being like, this is some of my best work ever. This was every lighting situation I love. This was all the posing I love, all the colors I love. Like I crushed this. It was one of those galleries that I was like, oh, a magnum opus, if you will. And I sent off their gallery and then I quickly got a response being like, hey, can you make the photos private? And that's all they said. And I was like, okay, shoot. And so I did that. And then I ended up getting this long, long email just about how disappointed they were, how I didn't capture a single thing for them, how my editing looked blue and murky. Like just, I got absolutely ripped to shreds in this email. I also was in the middle of my divorce, which no one worked related knew that but my friends did aka they knew this because I was somewhat friends with them and while I was shooting their wedding my mom also was hospitalized it was like a whole thing and yet I made sure that like no one would have known um, on the actual wedding day and on the actual wedding day literally one of the biggest pieces of feedback I got from everyone was like how great I was on the wedding day. And despite that, in addition to ripping apart my work, they made sure to be like, well, I know you're going through some hard shit and it looks like you really let that bleed into our experience. And so it was just like, an absolutely crushing email to receive because they brought so much personal stuff into it. And I remember just being devastated because it was work that I was so ridiculously proud of and excited for and obsessed with. And yet they were like, this is basically the worst thing I've ever seen. Like they, there was not a single aspect of what I delivered that they did not tear apart. There weren't enough images, even though there was over a thousand and it had just been me shooting that day. I didn't even have a second, which is like absurd amount of images. Like you name it, they complained about it. And so I offered to re-edit it. That was the first go-to was like, okay, you're saying it's like blue and murky. Let me edit it lighter, brighter, warmer, which was already taking the work kind of outside of my typical style. But I was like, you know, if it's just a little, that's totally fine. So I spent hours and hours and hours re-editing all over a thousand images for free. And here's another thing when you're navigating a situation like this, you get to decide what works for you. For me, I was like, I'm willing to do this one re-edit for free because they're so disappointed and I want them to have a good experience and be happy with their images. Moving forward after that, that's where we entered like, okay, if they need another re-edit, I'm gonna have to charge, we're gonna have to do this. Once they got the re-edit back though, still just like abhorrently disappointed, like, and just really, really mean. And it got to the point where they were like, you can't do this, give us the raws, which important context, they were also photographers who had a wildly different style than mine. And so it just felt like a situation where I was like, oh, they wanted someone to photograph in their style. I'm not sure why they didn't hire an associate see it instead of me, but okay. Um, and so then we had to start the discussion of how much raws cost. And this is something that I think is so important for photographers to know is at the end of the day, if you have completed your contract, you are not obligated to do anything for anyone. Like even that first edit, I could have charged for that. I chose not to, that's a personal decision because I wanted to serve them and make them happy. But if you start nearing the territory where you're like, oh, these people are never gonna be happy, then you get to start charging. And so that's what I did with raws. I've never given out raws in my entire 
career other than to this couple. Um, and that's because we were a year, yes, you heard me correctly, an entire year deep in them just like ripping me to shreds. I was getting like word through the grapevine and the industry that they had been bad mouthing me to people. And so it just became one of those things where I was like, you know what, you want the raws, this is how much they cost. For those who are unsure of what to charge for raws, I typically charge at least a couple thousand dollars. Like at the end of the day, you're taking my work to edit it. Um, they had also edited a lot of my JPEGs and like just massacred my work and shared it. And so it was like one of those things where I was like, these people are already so deep in breaking the contract. And we've kind of, we've gone out of like respectful dialogue. So like, I am gonna charge you for these raws. Here's what we're looking at. So that is personally how I navigated situation number two, where it's just like, I don't know what's going on, but something is going on, here it is. The third client, and this is the hardest one for sure. Well, not hardest, they're all hard in their own ways. But number three is just kind of the off the rails client. And for me, this one can always be, I think, I think this one is one of the most like, offensive because there's no niceties there's no respect it's just usually like very disrespectful and like very shocking the client this was for me was i i shot this couple and she was in her 30s which in utah is older for anyone else in the history of the world this is not old like i am almost 30 i probably won't get married till i'm in my 30s however most people in utah get married at like 2021 20, and so during our consultation, she told me that she was feeling really insecure about how old she was and that she was getting all this Botox and work done before her wedding to look the way that she wanted to, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I was like, okay, we're definitely working with like some deep insecurities that are gonna show up when she gets her photos back. And so what we did was we sh shot their engagements. She had like positioned to me that she wanted like a really romantic, like Canyon engagement session, but then they had brought like their pickup truck and baseball caps and things that I was like, like, oh no, she's gonna be so disappointed because this is so different, one, than my normal style and two, that she, what she's described. That, like she's gonna be disappointed when she gets these back. Um, and so when I was gonna deliver the images, I made sure to Photoshop her skin more than I normally do just because I knew it was something that she was really insecure about. She had brought it up several times. And when she got her engagements back, lo and behold, ripped me a new one about how old I had made her look, that I needed to edit her skin, which, how do you nicely say I've already edited your skin and edited wrinkles out? Like it was, it was just a nightmare as soon as I delivered it. And so I had to re-edit their gallery like several times for them um, until it got to the point that they felt comfortable with. Um, and I did that for free. And then we discussed doing their bridal session. And for her bridal session, she told me that she had found this other gallery that I had done like a year back of a 20 year old bride who wore this certain dress at the Capitol, Utah State Capitol. And she told me she had bought the exact same wedding dress as that bride and wanted her bridal photos to look exactly the same which that is a recipe for just sheer disappointment is trying to replicate someone else's photos let alone someone a decade younger than you when you are you know nervous about how your skin looks and so i made the decision that i was like there's just no way i'm going to be able to serve this couple in the way that they need to be served like i am just simply not the best fit for them and so i decided i was going to end the contract and refund them and help them find another photographer who would fit them better I posted in a local photography group kind of explaining the situation anonymously, no names were named. Um, however, within this photography group, someone somehow figured out it was their friend and screenshotted all of it and sent it to this couple. And so the couple felt that I was dumping them because they weren't my style, which I've never done that in the history of my career. Um, but that's how they took it and they decided to just smear my name all over the internet. I'm talking screenshots, blasting, um, a bunch of other photographers got tagged in the post that they were posting me about and reached out to me to let me know it was happening because they were my friends. It was a nightmare, like a laying in bed crying for days nightmare. And I'm only sharing these stories in hopes that it can like make you feel better because this situation, this just like nightmare client of, nightmare of a client, ended up in me having to terminate the contract, refund them, and then I just had to let it go. That was it, I just had to let it go. Like, there was nothing I could do other than take them to court for defamation, which was too big of a hassle to do. There's nothing I could do than just like come to terms with it and have trust that my career would move on from it, and it did, and it always does. And the biggest lesson that I want you to take from each of these three different types of clients and these three stories is that there's something to learn 
every single time, right? Even if it's client number three, that is literally just a nightmare. Like I knew some vendors that ended up working with that couple and they were like, they literally yelled at every single vendor. Every single vendor was miserable. Like they just wanted to be miserable. But there's something to learn always. Like client number one, that taught me so much about like making sure to have really in-depth conversations with my clients before their wedding day and also making sure that like they understand my style. Number two, also really talking through like if I'm the right fit for people on their console calls, making sure that they feel comfortable with what I can give them, learning how to navigate re-edits and trying to fix things with my clients. And client number three, that was an example of being like, I need to hone in more on my ideal client and speaking into who's a good fit for me so that people like this never feel like they wanna work with me either. Like they should have known I wasn't their ideal photographer just as much as I should have looked out for why they weren't my ideal client. And so regardless of what kind of hard situation you're finding yourself in and work whether it's your fault or not there's always going to be something more to learn even if it's that you need to add something to your contract right like I added a defamation clause in my contract after that third client I made sure to be really really specific on the way that I edit and showing so many different lighting situations after client number two I made sure to have a super in-depth pre-wedding experience with my clients like after client number one so really after you've moved through the emotions of a horrible wedding experience sit down and be like how could I have avoided this what on my end can be changed to prevent situations like this in the future that is everything that is how to navigate horrible situations that you might find yourself in with your wedding clients but again i want to tell you that one you can come back two you can usually at least try to fix it and three you can fix something moving forward and if you guys want help with your pre-wedding workflows with your clients we will link our nine page wedding questionnaire that we sent to all of our clients before the wedding day down for you below and if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to slide in the dms but i hope you could learn a thing or two i love you guys i mean it and i will see you next time